All right, folks. The cops and crime beat the jurors convict Trump loyalist Peter Navarro after just four short hours on his charges that he went ahead and ignored a subpoena to not testify in front of Congress, right? So the guy is 74 years old. He's long insisted that he wasn't legally obligated to testify in front of Congress or provide documents requested by the feds because Trump, who is no longer president, had granted him executive privilege. Well, Judge Amit P. Mehta shot that argument down in a pretrial hearing last week, leaving Navarro's defense team grasping at straws as they tried to justify his failure to appear for a deposition. Prosecutor John Crabb Jr. told jurors in opening statements that the case against Navarro was simple. He'd failed to show up for a deposition as ordered and deserved to be punished as anyone else would. Quote, this case is about a guy who didn't show up for his testimony, Crabb said. Yes, this case is that simple. This case is also that important. We are a nation of laws, and Mr. Navarro acted like he was above the law. Jurors didn't buy the defense's argument that Navarro was merely a loyal advisor to Trump who was following his boss's orders, caught up in a misunderstanding about whether or whether or not he was shielded by executive privilege. Stan Woodward, Navarro's attorney, told jurors that his client didn't testify before Congress because its rep or his representatives never came to confirm with him that he's required to. So with no guidance from Congress, you know, Navarro merely said that he was following Trump's orders not to comply with the committee's request. So, quote unquote, for the government, to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt, it also has to prove that Dr. Navarro's failure to complete with, comply with the subpoena was not the result of accident, mistake, or inadvertence, Woodward said. Crabb shot back that Woodward's argument made no sense. The prosecutor told jurors that Navarro, even if he had been granted executive privilege, would still have been required to show up on Capitol Hill and explain why he was protected on a question-by-question -question basis. So Navarro did admit to ignoring the subpoena, but he never apologized. While others in Trump's orbit have turned their back on the former president in the wake of his quartet of indictments, Navarro has never waited, wavered in his support, telling anyone who will listen about his failed efforts to keep Trump in power. While Navarro was eager to tell the world about the lengths he went to overturn the election, he refused to speak to Congress. Had he done as little as show up on Capitol Hill, and assert his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, he likely would have evaded charges entirely. Prosecutor Elizabeth Alloy noted as much in closing arguments on Thursday, saying Navarro, quote, was more than happy to share his knowledge about the 2020 election with the public, on the news, with anyone that asked, except for the congressional committee that could actually do something about it. Peter Navarro made a choice. He chose not to comply with the congressional subpoena. The government only works when people play by the rules. Crabb added, he blew it off. That just shows you it was intentional. So now, pending appeals, 74-year-old Peter Navarro would soon be headed to prison, all because he fell for the big lie and fell under the spell of one of the greatest con men in the history of the world, Donald H. That's it for Cops and Crime today.